Hello, good morning. How are you today? It's Wednesday again, somehow. It's amazing how that keeps happening. <laughs> I am Heather. I am the owner here of UU Yarns. Hi, Donna. Good morning. Thanks for dropping a hello in the chat. I love to see who's here. I just made myself a fresh cup of tea and because it's a little chilly. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Good morning. So, how are we today? I am, yeah, I'm a little chilly. It's only in like <laughs> the 50s here, which I know is not cold. I grew up in Pennsylvania, but now I live <laughs> in Southern California. Oh, Donna, 82 and sunny. Are you in Florida? But yeah, it's only in like the high 50s here. And it's not bad, but we haven't turned the heat on in our house yet. So it <laughs> gets a little nippy on the fingers, <laughs> which is why I am wearing a bulky sweater. That is the good thing about living in Southern California is <laughs> people don't like overheat or over air conditioning anything. So you can kind of like, <laughs> you can kind of get away with wearing nice thick sweaters here, which is pretty hilarious. So I am wearing, this is called Ursa, U-R-S-A, like the constellation. And it used, I knit mine in Baba Bulky a couple of years ago. Uh, and oh, got some fluff over there. And I really like it. It has a little half brioche stitch detail and it goes down the arms and you can see it repeats here on the back. Just a nice kind of loose, easy wearing sweater. I do have a whole detailed blog post about this sweater too, about how to knit it and how much yarn you'd need if you want to make one yourself. Oh, good. Hi, Pam. You've never knit a sweater before, but you'd love it's on your list for 2023. So that is something I want to talk about today. Oh, hi, Karen. Nice to see you. Karen is local to me here in North San Diego County. Um, so I want to talk about our 2023 knitting plans. Last week, we, I, opened up a survey about what sort of things you'd like to knit and learn in the new year. And if you haven't taken that, I'll post a link again. And then I think we'll close it out by next week, Tuesday. So we can have like kind of a full idea, like two weeks of people with ideas and stuff like that. And on the survey, I ask, it's only like four questions. So it takes you less than a minute. But I ask like a range of things you might want to learn. And then there's a couple other questions like if there's a pattern like this Ursa sweater or another sweater or anything that you found on Ravelry, my website, any website that you've been wanting to learn, you can drop it in a comment box on there. And yeah, so I will post a link to that survey again. The responses that are coming in are very interesting. I have a lot of comments or check marks for fixing stakes. A surprising number of people want to learn Magic Loop, which we can go over Magic Loop. And then a lot of color work questions. So for both color work stranded, like Fair Isle, where you're using two colors across in one row, and also chaotic knitting, which is kind of you're using, you're only ever using one color on one row and the other color on the other row, but then you're slipping stitches, which helps seem like you're using more colors and the designs, you know, become more elaborate, but you're not knitting with two colors on any given row. So color work in different ways, magic loop. I have my survey results here up on my screen. So that's why I'm looking over to the side. Got a lot of people for sock knitting. And the other main one we got is brioche knitting. So maybe we'll go through and pick up a few of those. So if you have, you know, just a minute, you can comment on that survey. I will leave a link when I post this live in the community and that way you can give your feedback oh hi Anne. 
Hi, Gail. Hi, Heather. I missed the beginning. What is the pattern? Ah, this pattern is called the Ursa Sweater by Jacqueline Syslack. And I knit mine using Soft Sage Baba Bulky. <laughs> oh, one more request for brioche. Okay, Anne. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So we'll leave our... So this is my Baba Bulky. I love this sweater. Nice to throw on, like I said, on a chilly day. So yeah, that was kind of my first order of business was the survey is coming along. We've had 200 people reply so far. So you can check box on stuff you want to learn. And then you can, there's even a couple boxes you can fill in. If you have a pattern you've been eyeing up, like, I don't know, the weekender or somebody said ranunculus or stuff like that. So if there's like a specific pattern or just any, you know, whatever you want to, that's fine. And then I have a little survey of how you'd rate your skill level. I can't wait to tell you how we all think we are as knitters. And then at the end, there is a box <laughs> that you can leave a message. I got a lot of Merry Christmases or, but I also have looking forward to our con to more content. They love my emails. They love the celebration blanket. That's a good project. So anyway, I encourage you to take that survey and I will be sure to post it in this thread when this goes live and I will be sending out at least an email or two about it before we call it for next week. And then we can go over everything and maybe make a plan and start outlining the new year. But outlining is another fun one because the next order of business I was thinking of is I am still obsessed with this Caitlin Hunter sweater, Ilya. And I showed my colors last week, which are going to be the main color of this Heather's Heather Sapphire the first contrasting color in the lavender woolly worsted and my pop my third color is the vanilla so it'll kind of be a blue sweater with a lavender funnel neck and bright cream accents so that should be a lot of fun and i'm going to start swatching and i'm going to make a little how to about how to swatch for this in the rounds. I just haven't had a chance yet because it was crazy hectic with all of your orders from Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So that was amazing and thank you. And then this past weekend was birthday weekend here in this house. So we took a couple days off, which was really nice and relaxing. And yes, so that, so I am making an outline for Ilya and I think we'll maybe cast on around like the first of the year. So I'll start working on like quantities and stuff like that and put this out in the next, hopefully by the end of the week. Like I said, I took a couple days off. So um, anyway, the third order of business today I'd like to talk about is a temperature blanket. So if you haven't heard of a temperature blanket, there was a project, a scientist took a, took like the daily measurements. I think it was like her average daily temperature where she lived or at some place on earth. And she picked color ranges of yarn and knit. Like, I think she just did a simple garter stitch scarf and she knit in one particular color for a series of temperature ranges, like zero to 10, 11 to 20, you know, that type of thing. And just to evaluate like when the warmer weather started and stuff like that. So I'm sure she has a whole thesis about it. But anyway, it kind of became a trend then. And so the temperature blanket is kind of a fun and neat activity now. And so we have our friends at Billy and Ba who make adorable notions. If you are in the market for some knitting notions, these guys, Billy and Ba, 
Knitwithmelanie.com. Tons of cute knitting notions, but they also have a lot of fun free patterns and useful guides like this one. So this is the temperature blanket how-to guide and you can see it is an actual like thing going on. Now in conjunction with them, we also have a yarn kit in some colors that they picked out to coordinate for a temperature blanket. And now that, that, that is the thing, it doesn't have to be a blanket or whatever. So anyway, I'll go through this guide. So you have a nice, cute temperature blanket. Oh my gosh, temperature snakes. Okay, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Then on the next page of the temperature blanket, there are a ton of ideas and points, which we'll go over some of those. And then there's patterns and a link to the original, that original scientist project on Ravelry and tons of good stuff like that. And then as you get into the guide, the next page is the one where you can make your scale and what pattern you're using. <laughs> she says house rules. <laughs> so, you know, what pattern you're using, what measurement, like I said, are you taking the high temperature for the day, the average temperature for your area? Are you making this project for someone? What size needle are you using? And then you can set your range. And this one we did from zero to 100 plus, and we chose 12 colors of UU yarn to coordinate with them. So you can see we have dark reds at the hot and icy silver at the coldest. So we have this nice little range that goes down and you get one ball in our kit, you get one skein of each of these 12 colors. And now the thing about the kit is you do get 12 balls of yarn in these colors, but you know, we may end up with more 70 degree days or more 60 degree days. So you might end up using more of these colors kind of in this middle range. So you might need more skeins depending on, like I said, what type of project you wanna make. The temperature blanket seems to be kind of the most prevalent and popular. Are various patterns. I've seen granny square versions. I've seen another Tunisian crochet one. You can just cast on a width of your favorite size blanket and do a row a day because you're ending up with 365 rows. Or if you go over and back, you're ending up with <laughs> 730 days so or rows I mean so you end up making a large blanket so you know our yarn kit is sort of a jumping off point and you know like I said you can do a scarf Karen commented here she's seen temperature snakes which I haven't seen that but now I need to find that oh my sound is going in and out oh hmm. I'm sorry to hear that let me adjust real quick and just make sure. Okay, hopefully that is a little better. One more thing. All right, okay. Thank you, Nan. I appreciate it. So there are some fun things to consider. Like say someone's away at college, you could knit them a blanket of where they are all, at college, or you could knit them a blanket of what the temperatures are at their home while they're not there. Or if you have a destination, you can make what they called a wanderlust blanket. So you could look at the temperatures there and kind of set yourself a goal to get there one day. And there's other fun things you could do. You know, we like to use a, oh, baby's first year. That's a great idea. So we like to do a, we like solid colors, obviously, here at UU Yarns over like speckled or 
a lot of hand dye. But one fun thing you could do is if you have sort of like an outlier weather day, like if there's a hurricane or something like that, you could get a completely different, excuse me, crazy stripe of yarn. Or excuse me, I got, I lost track of what I was saying. You could do, let's see. Oh yeah, for the hurricane and stuff like that. All right, so yeah, these are kind of the fun things that, yeah, pick a location, pick your temperatures. And yeah, so all those are kind of outlined in this really nice guide. And this is a free download from Billy and Ba. Do you have an example of a temperature blanket? I don't have one here on hand. I can post a little lookbook and I'll post links to the some patterns and stuff like that. So I'll do a little blog post about it. And that way we can kind of look and then maybe other people can, if they've knit one, they could share what pattern they used or like that. So we can get talking about it. And like I said, our woolly worsted comes in a whole nice range of colors that you know you want good contrast between which colors or which, yeah which colors represent which temperatures so that's why our yarn works really well for it okay so that's kind of a quick overview of what a temperature blanket is and that you can go download this handy guide to kind of Think about everything. Oh, I didn't even get through the rest of the guide. So after that then, each page they have laid out for each month and you can mark down the temperature for every day. And then maybe a little reminder of places you knit this month and memorable days. And then that way you can, this is like a nice ledger that you can keep track of all of the days here through November. So that, you know, if you get behind for a couple of days, you can just pick up and pick up your guide and get knitting again. So, and then you have the whole thing set up too, almost like as a memento of how, like, you know, what you did on that project, <laughs> which we don't often have, <laughs> you know, it's like, I've knit this sweater, then what? No. <laughs> just kidding <laughs> but so yeah if you have any questions we can talk about it in the comments on here or when I post this live either way and then one last thing is I have a new design coming out I knit a cute little bandana cowl I just was blocking it it's on the <laughs> down here on my blocking mat one moment. Okay. All right. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. All right. So this beautiful thing is a new lush bandana cowl in Baba Bulky. So this beautiful thing, sitting a little narrow because I don't have it seamed up yet, but it is a new generous bandana cowl with a matching beanie. So a cute little beanie and a matching cowl. So I just have to sew up these edges back here. Just a quick sew on about this top six inches. And then yeah, really nice, really generous <clears throat> bandana cowl with sorry, excuse me, excuse me, with, so a nice bandana cowl with matching beanie. So this is a new free pattern that is coming out hopefully in the next couple days as well. Busy time. I really like it. I think it'll be comfy to wear. And this set uses three balls of Baba Bulky and you can make the whole bandana and the hat out the door. So knits up fast on 10 and a half needles. Good fun project. How do I sew it together? I am going to sew it with what's called the mattress stitch mattress. And let me slow down a little here. The 
back of the cowl has, or the edge of the cowl rather, has a nice garter stitch edging. And so we'll take the first six inches here before it starts decreasing and I'll sew it together. Oh, good. Oh, hi, Karen. Thank you for posting that temperature snake. I'll have to go look at it. Okay. So yes, I could even do a little stream about how to sew something together. So yeah, I can make a little video about how to sew. It's fun. It's, it's almost like making a staircase. You pick up on one side, move to the other, pick up the same row on the other side, move back, and you just go like this, up, 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 until you're done. And then you can zip it right together because you've never looped anything over. And it just makes this perfect little seam. It's one of the most fun things to do with knitting, in my opinion, is a quick mattress stitch. So I can make a little video about how to do that. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, sure. And then it'll go nicely with the cowl. There you can see the cowl has a little ribbing at the top, comes to a nice point. So that's about, yes, I know. Thanks, Karen. Yes, I like sewing pieces together. So that is kind of the order of business here at UU Yarns. Like, I think next week we'll go over that survey and I hope to publish a timeline to knit this and I will put all the info and ideas and temperature snakes and patterns all that fun stuff in this post and a link to get this how-to guide and then yeah we'll be launching this old bandana cowl with matching hat I really love it so if there's not too much else going on today, then that is it from me. I am Heather and it's been nice chatting to you. I'll be back next Wednesday and we'll go over that survey and see what else we want to do. So I hope you have a great day and happy knitting. Thanks, Gail. Thanks for coming. Have a great day. Oh, <laughs> you love my show. Thank you, Karen. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.